coming up on Facebook Live shortly. Hey, good morning. Grop Off Light Sports is going to be without the star today. She is at Nat Nats. But uh, we got a lot of stuff to cover this morning. You guys want to join in? Some questions? That'll be great. Um, final day of the week, and notoriously, this is one of the more boring times, at least for sports, uh, in Indiana. Well, we're about a week, a little over a week away from the Colts reporting up at Grant Park in Westfield for the start of camp, and we'll find out a lot more regarding Andrew Luck, I'm sure, early. But I want to direct you to this. If you guys were listening yesterday, you know what I'm talking about. But I had a fantastic conversation with former IU player, former Indiana Mr. Basketball, NBA player. Uh, he has a fishing show. He's a part of eSports. He was the former personnel director of the Denver Nuggets. Uh, Jared Jeffries was awesome on the show yesterday. I mean, absolutely awesome on the show, talking about a variety of things, um, from fishing to eSports to the makeup of NBA teams to IU to Tom Crean. It was incredible. So uh, my advice to you, if you missed it yesterday, check it out. Good morning to Brian. Good morning, Chris. Good morning, everybody. Tyler, watching. Um, <laughs> um, if you uh, missed it yesterday, check it out, 1070thefan.com. I mean, it's going to be worth your time, I promise. But uh, it was really good. Guys got something great going on. So... Um, uh, and, and a lot of you have, uh, you know, I, I didn't really ask him to rip on Tom Crean or anything. He just didn't like Tom Crean, and he gave his opinion on Tom Crean. But uh, anyway, a couple things about Archie Miller in there that were pretty good. You're going to like it, I promise you that. 1070thefan.com. Good morning, E Max. Um, brought to you by Bobcat of Indy. Each and every morning, right here, Bobcat of Indy. Awesome. If you guys need anything to work, need anything excavated, uh, anything you need to work out, whatever, uh, for your job, for your home, Bobcat of Indy. And I love those guys. Thank you very much for uh, being a part of Drop Off Light Sports. Good morning, Gary Hudson. Good morning, Seltzer. Um, no, we didn't ask you about his wife, Seltzer, but I'm assuming he's doing quite well. <laughs> The other conversation we had yesterday with Tucker Barnard was really good, too, because in a span of 48 hours, the Reds go from being this come-from-behind, seven runs, two outs, bottom of the ninth inning, upset win over Cleveland, to uh, being down 17 nothing to the Indians and getting blown out. Good morning, Scott. Uh, good morning, Kurt, not in Jasper. Um, it's interesting because you rarely see, you know, the excitement – and the euphoria of one, and then just how dismal they were on the next day. But Tucker has a really good breakdown of it, too. So if you'd like to hear that, a little bit about, you know, what has been his season so far, which started out the first two months awful. Um, good morning, Christopher, down in Alabama, Dothan, Alabama. Christopher's there. Pat Kendall, I'm going to come by probably next week and do a little cry roll if you guys are okay with that. I can't lie. I love me some Bruce Hordes me in the range. I can't lie. <laughs> um, Amy, good morning to you. But, um, yeah, Tucker Barnhart, we uh, talked to, as I mentioned, Jared Jeffries and uh, Mike Chappell, all up, podcast1070thefan.com. Happy Friday the 13th. Heath Bartlett, do we need to do a, um, we need to do a ranker today on your favorite Friday the 13th films, since there are about 50 of them? Uh, let's see, how am I going to go? The first two are good. I mean, it, the, the first one is incredible, I think. The first one is a classic horror film. I like number two okay. If you remember, number three was originally theatrically. It came out as 3D. Friday the 13th 3D in, I think, 1982 is when it came out. I think it went uh, the original 80, part two, 81, uh, three, 3D. A lot of people like number four, with the one with Corey Feldman in it. Um, but yeah, Friday the 13th. And then it started, you know, five on, started trailing off a little bit. But uh, man, the original in part two still holds as some of the best stuff ever. See, I would agree with you. He only watches the first two. I, mean, I don't really get, number three is kind of tough to watch too, but uh, sometimes you can. Part first two, I'm, I'm there with you. So happy Friday the 13th for you guys. 
Um, anything else you guys want to ask today? Mike Wells joins me later on today. Hashtag Ask Pat. Pat Sullivan with uh, a lot of the backyard, a lot of barbecuing stuff, a lot of stuff we need to know this time of year. And his prize package of Yeti is coming up on the show later on today. And just basically, I guess, a weekend, right? A weekend of kind of waiting for football a little bit here, kind of a wait-and-see mode. I talked to Charles Arbuckle the day before yesterday. It was pretty good about college football. I wanted to dive into that a little bit. Uh, and we did. Yeah, as far as expectations nationally of some teams, it was really good. There's a podcast up for that as well. And remember, you can sign up. Backyard Bourbon Broadcast. We love Evan Williams and we love Larceny. Backyard Bourbon Broadcast number two is coming up in early August. We will select here, I believe, next week or the week after. And all you have to do to get signed up is to log on to 1070thefan.com. And what we do is we bring the show to your backyard. We bring Evan Williams and Larceny. We bring food from Wings, etc., and hydration from Connecticut. And you bring yourself and 30 of your friends. It's awesome. Absolutely awesome. Brandon Reef wants to know if I'm going to Foreigner and Whitesnake tonight. It sounds good. I may make it up there. I might do it. Are you going tonight, Brandon, I guess? I may be up there. I think I've seen Whitesnake before. I talked to Jeff Pilsen of Foreigner. That's something I think is going to run back later on today. But Foreigner's pretty fun to watch. Foreigner's got a great catalog. Uh, Foreigner, Whitesnake later on tonight. Chris Roberts writes this. Everyone should go check out the Indians game this weekend. So much fun. I've talked to a lot of people that have been going out to the Indians games too this summer. And it has been. Got another great weekend on tap. I think it's going to be upwards of what? <coughs> Excuse me, 95 or so degrees. But, uh, yeah, should be a great weekend. But you're right, Brandon. You got, you got uh, Foreigner. You got White Snake, and I think, is it Jason Bonham? Jason Bonham's group, I think, is up there later on tonight, too. Uh, Scott Sargent says, good morning, JMV, from Jeremy Goat and Scott from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Good morning to Jeremy and Scott in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, this morning. And uh, anybody else who might be watching. Again, if you're an IU fan, um, if you're an NBA fan, if you're just a fan in general, Jared Jeffrey's interview is a must-listen to if you missed it yesterday at 1070thefan.com. I promise you will absolutely love it. Oh, I know the other thing, too. I didn't see how it turned out last night, but I was talking about the World Series of Poker. Seriously. Good morning, Brian. World Series of Poker. And John Sin is originally from Indy around Brownsburg, I believe. John Sin yesterday was on the final table and he was assured to at least receive one million dollars in the world series of poker so we got his number and we're going to try to get john on the show a little bit later on today to see exactly what goes down i don't know a great deal about poker or the world series of poker but pretty cool uh he was in on the last table the final table which is a big deal and assures you of one million dollars at least Ooh, def leopard animal Heath writes this, amazing to see an American man in the semis at Wimbledon. Isner and Kevin Anderson are going back and forth this morning. Kevin Anderson, help me out here. Kevin Anderson from, he went to the University of Illinois, I believe, didn't he, Heath? So, yeah, he knocked off Federer in five sets a couple of days ago. And uh, Isner is from Georgia, I believe. But, uh, yeah, I think Kevin Anderson is from the University of Illinois. All right, what other questions we got this morning? You guys want a ranker you want to do? You want to do a, since Def Leppard's on right now, you want to do a top five ranker Def Leppard? All right, since it's on right now, let's do it. We should have done Foreigner, I guess. It's Foreigner's in concert tonight, but Def Leppard is on right now. Let's do Def Leppard here really quick. Um, let's see. Foolin' Photograph, Rock Rock Till You Drop. Wait a minute. Foolin' Photograph, Rock Rock Till You Drop, Animal. And I need to come up with a fifth here. I don't have a fifth. Am I going down the right path? Yeah, I thought Kevin Anderson went to Illinois. I might be wrong about that. Who do I? I got to come up with one more song. I don't like Armageddon, it, though. Um, ah, Rock of Ages. Five. Yes, I'm sorry. Rock of Ages. Pour some sugar on me, but yeah. That's what I'm gonna do. All right, ready? Foolin', photograph, rock, rock till you drop, animal, and rock of ages. Top five Def Leppard right there. Top five Def Leppard. We'll do that as a ranker today. I like it. Um, 
Let's see, let's see here what you guys got. I like it. Too late for love. Emacs, man. Too late for love. Yes. Absolutely. Too late for love, Emacs. Foolin' Rock of Ages from Scott. Tell me what, photograph. Um, photograph is right there at the top of the list. But Pyromania is one of the best albums of the 1980s, without a doubt. And then they followed that up, if you remember, with Hysteria. But Pyromania is one of the best of the 80s. Just non-stop greatness, song after song. Pour Some Sugar On Me is a strip club anthem right there, Joel McWaters. There's no doubt. Uh, so we'll do a ranker with the uh, top five of Def Leppard songs of all time here. You like Hysteria? The song Hysteria, Hysteria, Love Bites, Armageddon It, Pour Some Sugar On Me, right? All big hits and Animal. I think those are five hits from Hysteria right there alone. Craig, good morning. Jeff, good morning to you. I do like Animal. Good song. Here's a good part of it here. All right, hey, I got something for you. So I got this for the kids about seven months ago, and then for the first time, today I'm like putting it together. Anybody have one of these? You guys have fun with these around the house? I got it for the kids about seven months ago and I have not put it together until yesterday. Echo Plus or whatever that thing is right there. Echo Dot. So you're supposed to be able to ask it questions and it goes after you. Uh, Jennifer says you need to rank her of top five albums of some of these groups too. Yes. Yes we do. Yes. Yeah we do. Um Easy. I mean, Pyromania is easy. Pyromania is probably for the 80s. Pyromania is a top five album for me for the 80s. Um, we don't necessarily have to rank 80s albums right now, but, you know, I think Pyromania, Joshua Tree, Synchronicity, um, um, maybe 1984, um, Appetite for Destruction, there's five right there. Uh, High Infidelity, Six, um, Thriller, I love Thriller, Seven, no, not necessarily in this order, but I'm just going through 80s albums off the top of my head that I absolutely love. I'm probably forgetting a ton of them here, but uh, uh, Scott Yaney says, great conversation with JJ yesterday. I didn't know he was such an interesting dude. My man has a great life going on. The Human League, don't you want me? <laughs> Born to the USA. Slippery when wet. Yep, I see, I know. You gotta you got do these off the top of your head, you start forgetting about some or leaving them out. But true story right there. Uh, Corey Hall says, you got an Alexa. Hold on. Don't have one, but you know quite a few people that do. They're pretty good. That's what this is, Alexa? Uh, you have no idea how that's going to work. <laughs> but it's good. But yeah, JJ was good yesterday. JJ has a fishing show that's on hiatus this season, but coming back. Uh, so I'm talking, obviously, about uh, Jed Jeffries. Jed Jeffries has a fishing show, uh, which is awesome. He has an eSports. He's the president of an eSports company started by Rick Fox um, out in L.A. right now. Just a year ago, he was the director of player personnel for Denver. And if you remember, the Nuggets were in on all those rumors about trying to get Paul George. And he felt at the time that the Nuggets had a better package to get Paul George than ultimately what Kevin Pritchard chose in Victor Oladipo and Doma Sabonis. But we saw how that worked out, which was fantastically. But it was really good. We talked about free agency, super teams. He explained the whole super team um, dynamic that's going on right now in the NBA at least in Golden State, was more of circumstances than it was anything else, and he's right. And here's how he explained it. Too late for love? I like that. Darnell, good morning. He explained it as, all right, Golden State drafted what? Both Curry and um, Clay Thompson. Curry hurt his ankle. They didn't have to pay Curry as much initially, right? Circumstances. Clay Thompson drifted down, slid down in the draft. So they got a hold of him. And then once they evolved into a better team, you get Kevin Durant, who was willing to take less money to go to try to be a part of that. And by the way, you drafted um, Draymond Green, who slid down too. So circumstances are what he was talking about. I brought up circumstances of Houston, right? Houston's the super team, and you take Chris Paul out of the equation. But the reason why they even created a super team with James Harden is because OKC had to figure out how to pay all three and couldn't and wanted to try to pay Westbrook 
and then at the time, uh, Kevin Durant, and they just basically let James Harden float for not a great deal, if you remember, from OKC to Houston. So, yeah, circumstances, I would agree. A lot of people were saying, man, you got to do something about this. But normally circumstances, I mean, L.A. is L.A. People were just going to go there to go there like LeBron has and like many have done that have before him. But um, like Shaq, for example, like Dwight Howard did it as well. But um, circumstances, I thought it was a really good explanation. 1070thefan.com, check it out with uh, Jared Jeffries. Good morning, Joel. Purple Rain's on the list, too. Uh, Rob Ellis, good morning to you. Hey, Purple Rain's on the list. 1999 is on the list. Um, um, what's, what is it? Is it Alphabet Street or... No, Sign of the Times, I'm sorry. Sign of the Times is on the list. Prince has got... Hey, Around the World in a Day is on the list for me. So, yeah, there's nowhere out. So, Jeff, it was a great explanation. So we got so many people jumping to conclusions about how to stop the super teams. But, you know, a couple of those super teams that we talk about the most were developed by by circumstances. I thought it was a really good explanation I did. The Human League. All right, where are we going here? Let's go here. Try that. Madonna Holmes says Thriller. Absolutely. Madonna, my kids miss you. They miss you. Thriller, he says Heartbeat heart, heartbeat City by the Cars is absolutely on there. Um, that was a huge one back in the day for me. Brian Swafford, good morning. What I put? Synchronicity on there? Ghost in the Machine maybe on there? The Police have a couple of albums probably on it. Um... Certainly Purple Rain is on it. Yeah, I mean, we'll think about that more. Uh, Rio by Duran Duran, Seven and the Ragged Tiger by Duran Duran. It's probably high on the list. Now, I can go deep on this, too. You guys keep reminding me of stuff, so easily. Um, anyway, later on today, got you covered with absolutely everything. Hey, 404, guys, right, of the 80s, 404, yeah. Urgent, um, that ballad. Um, what else? Oh, Jukebox Hero 404 is probably on that list as well. Um, Joel says, do you still think the Pacers can get Marcus Smart? Huh? I think that ship has sailed. I don't even know if they considered him, to be honest, Joel. Um, I think they did. They went with what they thought would be shooters. Now, Jared Jeffries didn't wonder about Tyreek Evans. He thought maybe that Tyreek Evans was a little bit of an anomaly this year with the numbers he put up. He did wonder about that. Um, anyway. Uh, Darnell says the Thunder have a fundraiser to help us out at the World Series of Beatball Pawn Shop Pub. Uh, that is uh, 4 until 9 tomorrow. What is it? Uh, Pawn Shop Pub, 2222 East 54th, is uh, 4 until 9. Darnell, well done, buddy. As always. Sports by HLN. No, but Jared Jeffries was really good. Podcast1070thefan.com. Um, also, Tucker Barnhart from yesterday was really good. You can check that out. Ride to the Reds is coming up. That is a week from Wednesday. A week from Wednesday, we're going to ride to Cincinnati in a bus and back to go see the Reds and the Cardinals. And you get signed up by joining me. First things first, next Thursday, we're going to give away some spots at Manley's Irish Mutt. Um, over on the east side, 10th and Shadeland at Manley's. We're going to give away some uh, chances. For, actually, not even chances. We're going to give away spots on the bus for you to go with us. This is always a blast. Thank you, Evan Williams. Ride to the Reds. And again, we go to see them play the Cardinals a week from Wednesday. A week from Wednesday. So, this sounds like she bop right here. When's the last time you guys heard she bop? Who sings she bop? Put it up there. Sounds like a remix of She Pop. <laughs> she Pop. She Pop might be my favorite Cindy Lauper song right there. Cindy Lauper, you want to rank a Cindy Lauper? She Bop, Girls Just Want to Have Fun, Time After Time, All Through the Night, and Goonies. <laughs> Ride to the Reds. Uh, the first chance for you to get a uh, ticket and a seat on that bus is coming up uh, a week from yesterday. Manly's Irish Mutt. Uh, also, Backyard Bourbon Broadcast brought to you by Evan Williams. You can sign up today at 1070thefan.com. True colors, man.
I put Goonies on the list, Craig. That's awful. How do I put Goonies? Good enough for you. Goonies are good enough? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Ranker today, Def Leppard songs, The Ranker, and uh, conversations that we had leading into the weekend as well. Um, all can be uh, checked out, Facebook page, The Ride with JMP, and uh, my personal Facebook page as well. You can check it out there. Thank you, Bob Catavendi. We love you. I want everybody out there to have a great, a safe, and a cool weekend because I know it's going to get really hot. But keep me updated on what you're doing. Listen to the show later on today at 3 o'clock, and we are going to have a blast. Ask for the little girl, the little girl maybe Monday, certainly on Tuesday, but uh, she will be back and ready to go. And they're going to have to figure out some things. Um, I haven't shared with you this yet, but we've got <laughs> we've got some interesting times. We might have to try to go at a different time, but we'll, we'll figure that out as we get further down the road. Aaron, good morning. Darnell, thank you very much, my man. Thank you very much, Jennifer. I, yeah, I know. Uh, this is from Jennifer. We need to compile all your ranker list into playlist on Spotify. I can do that if you guys want. My playlist, by the way, on Spotify. Just uh, look up John Michael Vincent, um, and I got all my playlists right there. I haven't made a new one in a while, but I can. And yeah, we'll put that into into motion on Spotify if you guys want. You guys are awesome. Thank you very much for being a part of Drop Offline Sports. Later on today at 3 o'clock, I'm going to have a great show for you. Thank you, Bobcat of Indy. I appreciate it. Hey, quick shout-out my friends at Royal Spa. My man, Derek Cleveland at Royal Spa, is an awesome dude. I'm not, I had struggled with my water in the hot tub, and Derek made it easy for me. Thank you, Derek. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Thank you, everybody, for listening. We'll be back right here coming up around 8.30 on Monday morning. Drop off line sports. Let me see where this goes. Hold up. Let me see where this goes first. I don't know yet. I love me some remixes. I don't know yet. Oh. Down on uh, the cars. This cars by Gary Newman. No. Oh yeah, Gary Newman and Cars. I can pick out your remix pretty damn quick here, guys. This is pretty good right here. Let me turn it up. I think this is Gary Newman and Cars. Let's crank it. Oh yeah. This is a good song. Classic. Hey Jennifer, this is definitely going to be on the Spotify list. This is. One of the greatest all-time one-hit wonders right here. Greatest all-time bar none. Gary Newman in Cars. You guys want to know the real story behind this song, by the way? Really quick. The real story behind this song, <clears throat> from how it's been told, is that Gary Newman was actually getting chased by British thugs. Actually getting chased and they were going to beat the crap out of him, so he hid in his car and locked the door. I blank, I blank you not. That's exactly how it goes. Hid in his car and locked the door. <laughs> Check it out. That's not just, not just Wikipedia. Uh, I've heard that from Casey Kasem, too. <laughs> See? He's hiding from British thugs in his car. You guys learn a lot on this show every day, don't you? You guys learn a lot. Have a great day. Thank you, Bobcat of Indy.